All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about some automation for your game or project you're working on in GitLab. So there's a section here called CD and Pipelines in GitLab, which you can use to automatically build your project whenever you commit to a certain branch or just when someone makes a pull request. It's really quite handy. So in this case here, I can show you how to uh, create an export for your project for each type. So maybe you have a Linux export, Mac, uh, web, HTML export, and Windows. This is for a Godot project. But uh, there's a lot of different styles you can have. You can have a, a build for a C++ project, or Java, or Kotlin, all sorts of options here. And actually, um, next I'd like to have it run some unit tests. So that might be for a future tutorial. But I'll show you how to set this up here where you can have uh, automatic exports whenever you do a release build. And so all that means is just actually committing to this a release uh, branch in your repository. So I'll show that here. So you need to create, in this case, a release branch. So these are really cool. You can kind of see charts of also uh, past failures and success. And you can see here I was getting it working, so there's a few failures. I pulled this in from an example. So um, kudos to uh, Barcello. I'm probably saying this incorrectly, but uh, he gave me the idea here. He's got this uh, GitHub CI that he created with a Docker uh, file. And um, it basically does what I want to do, minus a little piece I took out, which was at the end here. And that's why it was failing. So he's got this extra part where he deploys the web to uh, GitHub web pages for the web export. I don't really want to do that for this. I want to keep it simple. So, but yeah, these provide quite a bit of a insight as to how your 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 build is doing. So if something starts breaking, can I track when it was broken and when it actually was fixed, as you can see here, and it kind of gives you some insights of what's going on. So to set this all up, it's really really easy. All you need to do is follow a specific format for GitLab. It's called a, a gitlab-ci file.yaml. And uh, you can work off an existing example. That's the easiest way to do it. So I pulled this from uh, that Barcello guy and uh, just deleted the last part. And um, so what this does is this grabs a Docker image that he call, he's actually names out here. So this is like from Docker Hub. And this is, uh, I think, the artifact. And this is like the underlying path. Uh, so this pulls actually pulls us this this image automatically, which I can show here in his repository what this actually is. So here you can see it's a base Ubuntu cosmic image. And uh, I think that's an LTS build if I remember correctly. So that means a long term. That's good. It's, it's a long term uh, service build. But you can always change this later as new uh, new images are posted. And I think the Ubuntu uh, company actually owns this so they'll keep updating and changing this image as needed and it's pretty cool so you can see everything it does here so it does a few installs for some tools that are needed like git python all the stuff that's needed for exporting and uh, these uh, Godot projects and then it grabs the latest Godot and creates the docker image this is the, all these are all the commands that are, that are used to actually create this docker image so what a docker image is it's kind of almost like a virtual machine but it actually runs on the base layer of whatever OS you're on. So in this case, I'm on a Windows OS, but you can run it on Linux and Mac, no problem. And it's a lot less heavyweight than a full virtual machine. And so it just kind of downloads the basics of what you need for that particular image. And the, the nuances of what the difference between like a virtual machine and a Docker container, I'm not gonna get into here. It's, it's pretty technical, but I may, if you guys request, get into that later. Um, so now, um, once this CI runs, it grabs that image we just looked at, and that was all encapsulated in this. And so that grabs all the Godot stuff it needs to actually be able to do the exporting. And then this actually, after it installs all those pieces of the Docker image, it will run these. And it, I'm amazed by GitLab. They offer all this stuff for free. So you can just run this right off the bat. All you gotta do is add this file and uh, I specify, so what, what does this mean? This means, I added this too, um, off of that previous example I showed you. Um, this will only do these targets 
so this is called a target pretty much I, I call it that at least it, similar to make file it uh, only when the release build changes so that release uh, I should say branch uh, has a commit or a change or a merge to it it will run these so this always tries to run this pipeline no matter what you commit to so it goes through here the first thing it does is run these and it sees that it has a export dependency that's what this is here so it starts from this and sees these you know, each one that has that particular stage dependency it will run and in this case since it has this only flag if I updated the master branch it would not run it so you'd see this pipeline not do anything so because none of these particular parts run um, so that's kind of how that works so anytime I just wanted to have this only do a bill a proper bill when I actually had something to release so that's my use case. You may have other use cases, so maybe you want to have this run. Uh, maybe there's a you would put another one here, that I, which I'd like to do in a future tutorial of like running unit tests, and you could have it just omit this and have that unit test run run on everything. Then when anyone makes a uh, pull request against your repo in GitLab, it will uh, fire those off and make sure they work. And if they don't work, you're going to see it not pass and it'll show up in the, in the, uh, the PR and also you'll see here that it broke in the charts. So what does that look like? So this is like a, a fake PR I created from uh, master into release just to kick off the pipeline and you can see here uh, that it passed. So that was one of the passing runs. I got it working and just removed some of that stuff I didn't need like the web export. Um, and so here you can see all these exports worked but in the case you probably want in the future, and I want at least, um, is having the unit test uh, job work. And that would be under a different category here. Um, so, you know, it wouldn't say export, it would say something else. Maybe test or something like that. You name it whatever you want, but that's that's probably what I would name it. Um, and then if that did not pass, you would see a red X or whatever here, and not a check mark. So you would know right away when you're reviewing that, that request to merge code, from one of your teammates or whatever that it doesn't work and so you can wait till they fix that and ask them to fix it before you can merge it in all right so here i'm going to show how to add one to a project you might already have and you just push the cut your code to gitlab or starting a new project whatever um, so here you can kind of see that the pipeline is not enabled I guess I hear that they're already enabled, but I'm not so sure that's the case. I'm just going to click this to make sure. I don't remember if that did enable anything. Ah, it just goes to the README. So I think all you have to do is actually add this file, and you don't even have to enable anything specific on your uh, on your repository. So let's go back here, and uh, we can actually just add the file um, directly from a push. So let's go ahead and do that. So before we're able to actually use this automated pipeline tool. We need to make sure that we have uh, some export settings already set in our project. So we'll go to project export, and I see I already created a Linux runtime, but now we should create the other ones. So we know that this one has a Mac OS runnable and a Windows desktop. And that should be enough. Let's go ahead and save that off. All right, so now I'm inside a, uh, a Git terminal, uh, and you can uh, see what we just changed. So let's go ahead and commit this. We'll call it uh, export template changes. And we'll push to our branch here. I actually pushed it to two locations. So that was Bitbucket, and this is a GitLab. And you can see all the remotes I have here. <laughs> so you can set up as many as you want to back up projects and uh, push to multiple areas. I'm only just doing this because I'm transitioning from Bitbucket to GitLab mainly, and I wanted to have something on GitHub so you guys could view all the progress. So that's all there now. So now we're back at the repository, and so all the settings are there for exporting, so we should be good for the pipeline. So we can start by just going to branches, 
And so here we have the branches that are available in the project. And if you recall, um, that particular settings file we just created for the GitLab CI only works on uh, the release branch. So typically you're going to you already have a release branch in most of these cases and you're going to want to make a merge request to that release branch and then as when you merge in this will kick off all those builds. And that's kind of what you want when you make a change to release it'll just make a new build but not before you do that. But anyway, we're going to work around that in this case. We're just going to make the branch outright just to make some it simple. So it'll be release and it'll be based on this tutorial baseline cuz that's where we created that change. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll check back in a few minutes. All right, let's check and see what's going on with the CIs. They should have been kicked off by now. And they are. And here's the progress. And we'll wait a few. All right, guys, so I noticed that all of them worked except for this Linux one. So if that happens to you, you can just delete the export template in Godot menu and you can actually just recreate it. So that's what I'm going to do and I'll show that output now. And this is probably an engine bug because this should never happen. I mean, it shouldn't core dump like this. It should just give you some kind of error message like the, the settings are not allowed or, or something more user friendly than this because this actually happens also. I tested this from the UI. So it's something, something to watch out for. If you get something like this, just delete your template and try again. There's some kind of bad settings that they should probably fix, but I don't know what it is. I'd have to look through this core dump and see what line of code is actually execute, uh, failing on. It's on, on execution. And you can do that with address to line and all this kind of stuff. I'll, I'll show it in another video perhaps, but uh, let's fix this now. All right, so let's put forth that fix I was talking about. So you just go here. You can delete the export template and just add it back again. And this will give you all the default settings. So something in the settings got messed up. I don't know what it was. I, don't, I think all I did was add a, a filter there. And that, even when I deleted it out, though, it still had the same bug. So just, you might have to be patient if something's failing on export. And this will happen on anything on, on the, this is a, a 3.1.1 release, stable release of Godot. So you, you'll run into this. It's not just because I'm using pipelines or anything like that. It's, it's just a Godot bug. But, and they'll probably fix it pretty soon. All right, now I'll amend that commit. And push the changes to this branch. Okay, so now just to get this done quickly, we'll do kind of similar to what we did before. We'll go to branches. And then, in this case, we'll delete the release branch. And when we recreate it, it'll kick off the pipeline again. And we'll make that base on tutorial baseline. And here we go. Now it should kick off another pipeline. So let's go there. And here it is. And we'll come back in a second. All right, nice. They've all passed now. So we got around that bug. We can kind of take a look. And if you're curious on what it did, you can look at the logs. And so now from here, you can download any of these exports. So every time you make a change in your release branch, it will export your project again. So that's pretty nice. You can just come here and easily download each particular build type from this, which is kind of nice. This one looks needs to be refreshed. But once we do that, we should be able to do so. So you can just come here, go to the artifact, and download your Linux, Mac, whatever, directly from the pipeline tool. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, just like or comment and subscribe to uh, get more tutorials like this. And feel free to ask me any questions below. And also, all the code will be included in the links below.